Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at the types of psychopaths by Kurt Schneider. Now Kurt Schneider was a German psychiatrist who strengthened our understanding of schizophrenia and personality disorders. The world of psychopathy is vast and Schneider is just one of the many contributors to this world. In his studies, uh, Snyder identified 10 psychopathic personalities, which later served as uh, an important milestone in psychology and criminology. Now, psychopathy is uh, quite an interesting field uh, that fascinates anyone interested in the world of psychology. So there's something about psychopaths and, and the way their mind works that, uh, that fascinates one and all. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at what Schneider meant by uh, psychopathic personalities and explore these types. Here, we restrict ourselves to Schneider's findings, but if there's future interest in this subject, we can look at other interpretations. Okay? Now, according to Schneider, a person with an abnormal personality is one who deviates from normal personality. Okay, and by normal, what Schneider meant was an average of the range of personalities demonstrated by the population. Now, we've previously looked at Allport's uh, trait theory in this channel, wherein we understood what personality traits are. Now, Schneider believed that an average person is a combination of certain personality traits and most normal people fall fall within an average of such traits okay so if you take an average most of the population would fall within that average within that range and an abnormal personality is is one that deviates from this average so an abnormal personality falls just slightly or well out of this average but not all abnormal personalities are psychopathic, okay? Psychopathic personalities contain a set of abno abnormal personality traits leading them to inflict suffering either to themselves or to society in general. He also believed that not all psychopathic personalities are criminal. Many can be found residing in society so there might be many psychopathic personalities living amongst us, according to Schneider. He then elaborated 10 types of psychopathic personalities. Okay, now let's look at these types. The first type is hypothymia. Now, hypothymic psychopaths are optimistic and dynamic personalities. Okay, so these personalities, they, they, they like taking initiatives but they can be quite hot-blooded and impulsive. They essentially have hyperactive minds, you see? So that's why it's hyperthymia. They have personalities which make them prone to cheating and committing fraud. So they're not, they're not normally capable of uh, very serious crimes. The next type is depressive. Now, depressive psychopaths are, are harder to recognize as they tend to brood and they actually tend to hide their feelings. They tend to be moody and can get really sad for, for no definite reason. They can be extremely insensitive and can resort to alcoholism as a means to escape reality. So the, they're these breeding, depressing personalities. Insecure or self-distrusting. Now, this is a special type. The, the title here describes this category of psychopaths but there are two types here sensitive and obsessive compulsive now sensitive psychopaths struggle to express their emotions and obsessive compulsive psychopaths can get really addicted to and obsessed with people or things and can be extremely inflexible okay now Snyder observed that insecure psychopaths tend to have a strong guilty conscience and therefore they're, they're people who tend to blame everything on themselves and the probability of such psychopaths committing uh, crimes is is relatively low according to Snyder 
The next type is fanatics. Now, these psychopaths are fixated on a single idea or a group of ideas and let themselves be driven by the idea. For such psychopaths, the idea drives them to the extent wherein they are prone to committing crimes. But the crimes they commit are usually intended to cause disruption and social disturbances. So the probability of extremely violent or graphic crimes is quite low. Now the next type is attention-seeking psychopaths. As the name implies, these psychopaths believe in vanity and deception. They are quite vain and they live their lives pretending to be more than what they are and convincing others about a made-up success story of their lives. This group includes people who brag about themselves, people who try to get attention with strange situations and people who can create circumstances to deceive others and to make themselves look superior in the process. Okay, now the next type is labile. Now, this type of psychopaths gets, gets intense mood swings, which are a lot more severe in comparison to the depressive type. And they can get into short phases of really bad moods and actually can, can actually come out of them quite quickly. So their moods are quite like storms, really. So they can blow away in no time and they can be back to normal. They do have the tendency to commit crimes, which uh, ultimately tend to provide them some level of emotional relief. The next type is the explosive type. Now, explosive psychopaths are the ones uh, who are triggered easily and can have very little self-control. They can be quite violent and uh, can be triggered even by seemingly harmless situations. Now, disappoint disappointments, failures, and abuse can actually be causes of such suppressed anger in uh, explosive psychopaths. Now, they can commit crimes of, of, of various types, unfortunately, from simple crimes to crimes which can be considered to be quite heinous. Affectionless psychopaths. Now, this is quite important. Now, as the name suggests, uh, these psychopaths la lack uh, basic affections that ultimately make us human. Uh, they have very low self-awareness, which makes them extremely unaware of their own behavior and feelings. Now, this leads them to not have any guilt, compassion or shame. They also tend to be uh, antisocial, sad and cold. So you see where we're going here. This is a very dangerous combination. And due to this lack of most human emotions, this type of psychopaths uh, tends to commit all kinds of crimes, including uh, extremely brutal crimes, uh, and that too without any element of guilt and resentment inside them. So the next type of psycho psychopaths is the weak-willed type, okay? Now the weak-willed psychopath types uh, tend to be younger than most others. And these are people who, who, who easily get influenced by everything around them and more so by, by people or, or groups that they tend to idolize. They often commit crimes because of, of social pressure, you see, because they can... Uh, they can be molded into various forms by the right type of stimulus. So they are people who are driven and uh, if the drivers take them in the wrong direction, they will go in the wrong direction. Now this type tends to commit crimes like robbery and fraud. Now the next type is asthenic. Now asthenia means weakness. It literally means weakness. So asthenic psychopaths feel weak and unfulfilled within themselves. They tend to be extremely alert and sensitive to their surroundings. They tend to feel that, uh, that their alertness, that level of alertness uh, to their surroundings makes them aware of any hidden dangers around them and, and that is what actually helps protect them. Okay, now these psychopaths uh, rarely tend to commit any crimes really. So these are types uh, types of psychopaths that uh, are often seen 
in hospitals getting treatments okay now this these are the types of psychopaths as elaborated by by Snyder you know as, as I had mentioned uh, this is also quite a vast field and it's it's not possible to actually look into every single concept elaborated by by Schneider uh, interestingly enough this classification of uh, psychopaths is now considered to be obsolete but it did serve as a very important milestone in psychopathy at the time and it actually helped helped us as a human race develop a deeper understanding of the mind of psychopaths in general and for people who actually want to look into more of Snyder's work, it's highly recommended that you look at his work on schizophrenia, which is also very interesting and very detailed and, and highly recommended. Okay? Great. I hope this was, uh, this, uh, was quite useful for you and uh, I thank you very much for your attendance as always. And as always, uh, keep liking the content in this channel. Please use the comment section uh, uh, to suggest any videos, any tutorials you want covered on this channel. And uh, please keep uh, taking good care of yourself and your family in these times. Okay, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.